Welcome to another video. This will be again a video regarding Katia V5. As we can see, my last video on Katia V5 was 10 days ago for Imagine a Shape Revolut. And we're going to discuss the following feature. So, underneath Revolut within Katia Imagine a Shape, we're going to find the extrude tool. And we're going to see that the tool palette for this will be very similar to the one for Revolut. As we can see currently, we are not aligned within the viewport. So I can just go over here and go within the front view. We're going to have the drawing table realigned like this. So we have the same functionality. Over here we have some primitive profiles. And within the background, we're going to see a wide array of profiles. They are a little bit different from the one uh, used for Evolve. And just like over there, we can also change the, the proportion of the profiles. So we can either scale them on one axis. We can also incline them. Or we can scale them on both axes. We have the same functionality with right click. We're going to be able to add point, move points, align point, and attract, erase. So all the elements presented within the tool palette will also be available, available with right click. So if I want to add a new point over here, I can just click on that. And afterwards, I can move that point. But I will have to select the point, and afterwards, I can move it. And with this profile defined, if I'm going to apply this, we're going to see that this will be enter. We're going to see that Katia will draw a profile using that sketch. Now, if you want to control the numeric values of the defined profile, we need to go and select all the elements. And afterwards, we're going to see that the addition is not available since we are currently on attraction. This was my last um, tool palette selected in Katia. So I'm going to go for affinity and we're going to see that the addition panel will appear. We're also going to have those values presented over here. So for the X, Y and Z. And we can just go over here and have some uh, parameters added. For example, 100 for X, 120 for Y. And now for the width of the part, I can go with 50. And now we're going to have that profile at the desired shape generated. So let me just hide this. and I will create a new profile. Again, I will press F4 so I can swap between views. I will go within the front view. If I want to center that profile, I can also select the Z and X plane. And now if I will click on extrude, we're going to see how this will be aligned. Let's take a look at some other elements. So just like over there, we can close a curve. So by default, we're just going to position some points. And we're going to see that this will be the control points. And the spline will be the orange one. So keep that in mind. Afterwards, if I will try to close the curve, we're going to see that the software will do that. But in this case, if you're going to have some overlapping elements, keep in mind that Imagine and Shape will have those processed. But afterwards, when we're going to go and add various thickness and other features, we could have problem because of this self intersection. If you just want to add thickness, we can either go to part design and we can use the part design thickness, which will be available over here. And we're going to see that if I will try to add this thickness, we're going to have an error. But the error will be located in the front of the shape in this case. So I will just go in reverse. And you're going to see that now Katia won't be able to add that thickness 
at the end. So this is mainly regarding this radius. I can go and add a smaller value. And you're going to see that with 0 0.1, we're going to be able to do that. So the one millimeter will be, will encounter some problem over here on that radius. But with this self intersection, we won't have any problem if we add thickness. But if we want to trim the element with some other subdivision or some other surfaces, we can encounter various problems. So let me jump back to imagine a shape and let's discuss some other elements. So I select this plane, go back to extrude. And I will go to the primitive profile tab again. And I will select a letter. For example, I want this N letter. I will just slightly scale this. And now I can also define the element dimensions. So let's see 100 millimeters with 100. And for the Z, I will set this to 30. Now we're going to see that an extruded profile will be like this. So we're going to have an open area over here. If you want to fill in this, there are two solutions. One solution is to go directly with the fill from generative shape design and just have that filled. And afterwards, if you're going to modify a subdivision, that will also update. So let's take a look at how we can do that. We can also use the input at the bottom. If I'm going to type in C afterwards fill, this will be the fill surface definition, which, which is available in generative shape design. So within uh, GSD. And now in order to fill the surface, we need to select the edges. As we can see, Katia will identify that there is an uh, open gap. But as long as we're going to proceed and select all the edges on that, we should be able to close this at the end. We see that we're going to have a close contour at the end. So I will just uh, hit preview on that. And you're going to see that this will be in yellow since this is a surface from GSD. But now if for some reason I want to modify the subdivision, I can just select that, press space. I can go to translation and I can have, let's say, the upper part of this N slightly elevated. And we're going to see how that surface will be in red. We're going to see that we have a local update pending over here. I can go right click local update and that will also be updated. So this is one, one approach when you are dealing with subdivision filling. You can just do them in post processing within generative shape design. The other option would be to use the merge tool over here. So before I'm going to merge this, I want to show you exactly what happens on a simple cylinder. So I'm going to slightly move the, the view over here. The creation is set to be in the middle of the screen. Therefore, the cylinder will be positioned like this. I will slightly move that and I will delete one of those faces. And now if I want to fill in this, I can go on merge. And within merge, I need to select the subdivision that I want to work with. So in this case it will be subdivision for the cylinder. We're going to see that we're going to have multiple options. So there will be merge, there will be join and there will be extrude mode. In this case, if you want to fill in the surface, just like within the original, we're going to need to use the middle one, which is the join mode. And afterwards, I need to select that surface. And we're going to see that the fill in surface will have this aspect. So it won't look like previously. We can also change these sharp uh, edges. So like this, we're going to have a sharp edge. Like this, we're going to have a little bit of roundness over there. But now to go back to the original aspect ratio of the model, we need to influence the 
the attraction of that. So I'm going to go on face selection, select the face at the top. Afterwards, I'm going to go on attraction and we're going to see that this was set to 50. So I will just increase that to 100. And you're going to see that the cylinder will be within its original shape. So we can do the same approach for more complex shapes like this open and profile. I can go with merge mode. Afterwards, I need to select that this will be the subdivision. And you're going to see that as soon as I will click on this, the cylinder will be hidden because, because we are going back, let's say, um, in time chronological when we edited surface three. And back then, the other elements like fill and subdivision surface four weren't defined and created. You can also swap the position over here. You can move it uh, back and forth if you want some operations to be chronologically um, either created before or others. So keep that in mind as well. Now I'm going to select this end profile. And with the same selection over here for join mode, I'm going to select the top face. And we're going to see that Katia will try to fill fill the model and the model will look like this. So we're going to have those curvatures that will need to be addressed again within the weight section. So I'm going to press OK because we want to have that merge over there. And now I'm going to select the model, select everything. And afterwards, we're going to go on attraction. As you can see, this is set to 78. If I'm going to go all the way to 100%, all those um, curves will disappear. So right over here on 91%, they will still be visible. But if you're going to go all the way to 100%, those will disappear. And afterwards, we can start and um, work with this. As we can see over here, we're going to have two triangles. So we're going to have this triangle and we're going to have this other triangle. So it won't be that easy to work with this afterwards, because if I'm just going to select um, for translation this face, we're going to see that it will be linked to that edge. So the same over here for this face. If I will try to move those, we're going to see that we're going to have those reappearing. So I'm going to need to go with both of those sections. And afterwards, we can have that moved. And now we're going to see that chamfer forming over here on the side of the end. OK, so I hope that you find this content useful. If you have some surface that you need to, to fill in, I recommend to use the fill from Imagine and uh, from Geometry Shape Design. But you can also use the merge afterwards the join over here within Imagine and Shape if you're not filling some elements. So I'm going to position a similar video over here to the left and a subscribe button to the right. Thanks for watching.